and come tomorrow with a different name. I just dance. I don't care what people say, honestly. I don't care, but I you've seen me do that. I mean, I take off my jacket. I go on that thing. I tell the brother who's playing, go and sit down. And I show them how to play. I, and I dance, and I wave my, my jacket, use a jet, and I wave it, and I dance like a, a small boy. And I don't care, because the Bible says, let them praise his name with a dance. So, your dance alone, just make sure it's coordinated. Your dance alone, your dance alone can be, a, a, you know some people when they dance, you wonder if you want to go and help them. You know, you know just, just, you, you almost want to say, do, 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 do. so the coordination can be there. But uh, please don't look, don't look anywhere because if the brother or sister might think you're looking at him. Just keep looking at me. But you know who I'm talking about. Um, so he said, let them praise his name with a dance. Let them sing praise unto him with timbre. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. With timbre, which means all kind of, you know, I don't know what timbre is here. You know, tambourine or anything. Um, and then he went further. Let them sing praise unto him with harp. Let them sing praise with him with, uh, you know, you have all these instruments here. Let's use it to bring glory to God. God take pleasure in the praise. And verse 4 says, because the Lord takes pleasure in his people. Isn't that wonderful? I said, isn't that wonderful? Now, let me close with this. And I want to show you how can we provoke the turnaround we are waiting for in our life. Number one, by living a life that pleases God. And when I talk about living a life that pleases God, I'm, I'm really talking about, you know, we doing something that God, that pleases Him. In Matthew chapter 12, we are told that God testified that he was pleased with Jesus in verse 18. In Matthew chapter 3 verse 17, we were told that God testified that he was pleased with Jesus. The question I'd like to ask our congregation is, whatever you are doing, can God come down and testify and say, uh, I'm fine with that? If God cannot testify to what we are doing, it's a sin. If God is not happy with what we are doing, it's a sin. Don't call it mistake. Don't call it. Uh, we are made to worship God, we heard earlier, but we are also made to walk in His will. And if it's not the will of God, then it's the will of who? That there is no, there is no, it's either your will, and your will is not the, the will of God. We are all corrupt, is what the Bible says. And we must understand that um, we can't be jerking and struggling and saying, you know, I don't. We have to. We have to. I'd like to give a simple example that when I came to Malta, 1994, I became multi-citizen. And then one of the, then there were no dual citizenship. I was told um, that the Malt Maltese government uh, basketball called me to go and play basketball in Cyprus. And I said, I can't play basketball because I'm, I have, I'm not Maltese. And they told me, don't worry. I was in London then. They told me, go to Malta house. We'll prepare a passport for you. And then when you come back, when I came back, they told me, listen, you can pick up a full Maltese passport because in three months' time, we are going to Andorra. Anyway, to cut the long story short, uh, I couldn't pick up my Maltese passport because I have to renounce my Nigerian passport. Um, and if I don't renounce Nigerian passport, I couldn't play for Malta. And in those days, there was nothing like dual citizenship. So I renounced Nigeria because I wanted to play for Malta. Um, one of the things I was told is that, you know, I have to have a full allegiance to Malta. I have to consider myself Maltese and do obey the laws of Malta. And I like to relate that with the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. When we come from wherever we come into the kingdom of God, God expects our full allegiance. It's if we either accept it or we put our gear on reverse and say, I'm going back to where I'm going, I came from. And we must understand this. We can't be in the kingdom of God and do our own thing. We can't. It's a sin. It's, it's, it's a slap on the face of Jesus. We come into the kingdom of God and accept all the conditions that is in that kingdom. And, and this is how we please God. This is my understanding of, of pleasing God. As Christians, we are not to live our lives the way we feel we should live them. Your feeling is not important to God. The just shall live by feeling. Is 
that what the Bible says? No. By, by faith. By faith in his word. By faith in his person. By faith in his instruction. By faith in our leadership. And we must understand this, that sin, if we are not obeying God, is sin, is, is disobedient. The opposite of obey is disobedient. And disobedient is sin. And sin is a sinker of destiny. Sin is things. It, it, it chases God away in Psalm 66 verse 18. I, I, I am too pure to behold sin. That's what it says there. So we must understand that our character must be above reproach at work. You know, I found people, I say to people, if you have something that is stolen in your house, you are a thief. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that God put a curse to it in the house of a thief. Think about that. Think about that. We tell our children, if you bring a pen home that is not yours, that makes you a thief. A thief is you took something that you are not given. Are you understanding what I'm saying? What you are not given makes you, if you are not given, you took it without permission, it becomes stolen. It, it's, and we must understand that if we are going to live a very a life that pleases God, we, we must abstain from all appearances of evil. We must live a life, not by power, not by mind, but we must do our best to bring glory to God in every situation. Uh, and, and that I call in our church a life of holiness. Number two thing you must do to, 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 to provoke the bad turnaround in your life is what I've said earlier on. Engage continuously in the life of praise. Acts chapter 2. In Acts chapter 2, verse 47, the Bible says, they were all praising God. You see the word praise there again. They were all praising God and having favor with all the people. Now, as a result of their praising God and having favor with all the people, God begin to act to their church. Number three, we must have a lifestyle of service. And I will stop on that. We must have a lifestyle of service. When I talk about lifestyle of service, everyone has something to do for the kingdom of God. Every single one. It's not just the pastor or the... Everyone. One of the first things we must engage our lives to in the kingdom of God is so winning. Evangelism. We must, a true child of God cannot spend a week without witnessing to somebody. If we fail to do that, it's because we don't understand our responsibility in the kingdom. God will not come down to win so. He will not. Angels will not come down to do it. Holy Spirit will not do it. We are told to do it. Go and do it. Holy Spirit enables us. He helps us, but they will not do it. All that we need for life and godliness has been provided. We have to engage in a service. You know, either it's cleaning the chair or setting up or coming early to spend a few minutes to pray or, 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 or be involved. Either the pastor sees you or not. Be involved in the kingdom of God. We are all called to serve. Amen? We are all called to serve. We must commit ourselves, if we want to command the favor of God, we must commit ourselves to the vision of the church, the vision of the pastor, and make sure however we serve, either financially or physically or, or whateverly, we must make sure it fit in the vision of our leader. And then run the vision with our leader with understanding. Um, Jesus said, lift up your eyes. And look at the feet, for they are all white and ready to be harvested. Who is going to harvest them? We are going to harvest them. In, the, in Exodus chapter 23, verse 25, the Lord says, If you serve me, you will, I will bless your bread. I will bless your water. I will take sicknesses away from you. They are all tied to serving. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, the Bible says, Seek ye secondly. Is that what it says? It's first. First, you will understand that if you look at Matthew chapter 6, Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray. Matthew 6, 9, this is how you should pray. Our Father. Matthew 6, 8, this is how not to pray. Matthew 6, 9, this is how to pray. And in, the, in, in all those, when it comes to chapter verse 33, he said, In all these, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Now, if you look at the Lord's prayer, our Father, 
Who art in heaven? Hallowed be thy name. All focus to who? To God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Then he says, Give us this day our daily bread. It has to be. It has to be. I'm serving the kingdom of God. It's the, it's the mind of God. Listen to me. If we are not going to serve God, there are some benefit, promise, provision, and, and prayers that God will not answer. That's just the way it is. And let me, let me close with this scripture to, com to confirm that. In Psalm 102, Psalm 102, verse 13 and 14. I would like us to turn there, please, if you don't mind. I will close with that. Psalm 102, Psalm 13, uh, verses 13 and 14. Psalm 102, verses 13 and 14. Are we there, please? Can we read after two together, whatever version we have? One, two. Okay. Um, let's read it loud. Let's, let's just make a noise. Let's, one, two, go. Hear my prayer, Lord. Let me cry for help. Okay, praise the Lord. Let me read it. <laughs> I thought I was in, uh, I don't know, Cambodia or somewhere. Um, all right, I'm going to read King James Version because I prefer it for this, for the purpose of what I'm teaching. I use different versions as well, but I bring, use different versions. As you can see, my main Bible is New Living Translation. But I choose King James because it fits in perfectly to what I want to say. King James says, you sh Thou shalt arise and have mercy on Zion. For the time to favor her has come. Yea, the set time is come. Now verse 14 tells us why. It says, for your servant takes what? Pleasure in her stones. And favor the dust thereof. What the Bible is saying practically there, brothers and sisters, is until we take pleasure in the things of God. And favor the little things that we don't consider matters and matters to God. God says then, obviously, His favor is not going to be abundant in our life. I want to close by, by encouraging us this morning, or maybe this afternoon now, that God is in the business of, of turning around things in our lives. And, on, and we must understand that this is why He wants us to praise Him. So, I hope and believe and trust God that you have heard something this morning. And I want to pray that God will give us a, a good understanding of what we have a powerful worship, worship leader in this place that I've told Pastor Joe many times. One day, and I've spoken to him once, he hasn't kept his promise that, you know, you need to come to Bakoma Chapel once and evaluate. Uh, because you're looking at me as if I didn't tell you one. You need to come and help us. You've got, you've got a person here where I told Pastor Joe when I come here, you know, and there is the other sister. That uh, that you know have fantastic voice, um, lead or, leading to when I come here, that every time I have that joy of worshiping. It's not I don't have good choirs; I have them. God bless them. But you got a man that can lead you into the presence of God. Let's take that advantage, and when we go home, let's take advantage to praise God in our private quiet time. God will bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give Jesus a clap of
that's the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even though Pastor Jai is not here, we would just want to praise God for this morning, for this morning message. As my brother Sandro said, it, um, he gave us the, a clear definition between giving thanks and praising God. So our life should be a constant worship to God. And yes, we thank, we thank the Lord, we praise God for Pastor Jait at his church. We pray for a mountain of blessings in their life. We pray so that, yes, Lord, that they will continue to be strengthened and that his ministry, not only in church but also on TV, will continue to flourish and bring people to Christ. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus, bless them in every way. Amen. And we thank you for the presence, for their presence in our lives and in the kingdom, in your kingdom, Lord, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, thank you, Father. Some notices before, before we close. Uh, June 29th, uh, it's going to be a public holiday, as you know. Uh, we need people, both women and men. I use the scripture. I like the scripture, the last scripture that Pastor Jai used, that we really need to find the light in the service of the Lord and even in the dust. There will be a lot of dust upstairs, so yes, uh, you can find the delight in that dust as well. <laughs> so I invite, uh, I invite you, I encourage you uh, to be here. Uh, people will be here as from 7 a.m., uh, but others will join at 8. So, if we are a good group, in a couple of hours, we will manage to do all the things. And there needs to be also cleaning, so um, even women can, can attend. Um, uh, so, let us come together. But we need names, it's important. Uh, we need names. I know some, um, uh, there are people who gave me names, but I, will, I would like to ask you to come to me so that I will write down um, your name once again, even if you came already, so that I'll have a, a complete list of who will, who will be coming. The more we are, the, um, the, um, the, the less time we take, and so that we can go and enjoy the rest of the day. Amen? So, thank you very much for that. Uh, on July the 3rd and the 4th, there is an evangelical women's retreat uh, at Port Sumcola. Um, you have, there is the poster there and we distributed this leaflet uh, last Sunday. If someone, if any person does not have, uh, we can give you one. It's here, basically. Um, uh, 7 July, joint service with Pastor Paul Mitzi. Uh, it will, uh, their church will be coming here. It's important for us to show our support by attending. Um, and uh, basically, uh, that's it from the notices. We will be having finally Pastor Jordan back with us. So we pray uh, for travel mercies as he's coming back to Malta. Amen. Uh, and Pastor Joe and Pastor Christine. Um, Claire, you want to share a testimony? I was struggling a little bit about whether to share this or not, but I felt to share it. Every time we sing that song, More Love and Power, I go back to Yugoslavia. And in 1990, before Yugoslavia opened up, I was there on a ship, a Christian mission ship. And we went ashore, it was still communist. Why am I sharing this? Because I've been struggling actually whether to share or not. But the, the point is, it lines up with what Pastor Jack was teaching about worship. And what happened was, we went ashore, we couldn't take the ship in. So a team of five of us went ashore. And we got on a bus, we didn't know where we were going, we asked the Lord to leave. The bus driver threw us off the bus at a certain point we found ourselves in this village and um, we went around trying to give out leaflets about Jesus and the people were literally tearing them up and standing around. 
And we said, what are we going to do? And we were going around this town, we made friends with some people. Actually, being a communist country, it was interesting because these people said, when you walk through the town, it was like a light went through the town, because we all carried Jesus. And then, in despair, not knowing what to do, one of the, we were a team of five, and there was one guy, and he went back to the ship and got his guitar. And we went on a staircase, and we just said, we're just going to worship God, because this place is close to us. And Simon, his name was, and so we sat on these stairs, a big flight of stairs, and we began to just worship God, and we began to sing praises. And suddenly, a child came, and then two children, and then five, and then ten, and then thirty, and then fifty, and suddenly we had a whole crowd of children, and we were singing, Father God, I wonder, I will sing your praises, you know, and leading them. And it turned out that right next to where we were, there was a children's convalescent home with kids from all over Yugoslavia. And we went in, and the woman said, I'm a Catholic, you can come here every afternoon, but don't come in the morning, because she's a Muslim. And the Lord just opened the way for us, through praise and worship, and we sang with these kids, we taught them songs in English, Hold Me Lord in Your Arms. There was one child who translated, they were up between 7 and 15 years old, which was a convalescent hospital, kids from all, all over Yugoslavia. Many of them gave their lives to the Lord. The Lord revealed himself to them in their dreams, where, they, where we couldn't explain. He was appearing to them in their dreams and showing them his hands and the blood that was shed for them. And then, other people, we had no money. We each went ashore with five pounds sterling for a week. Someone else found out that we could sing and invited us to sing in a restaurant. And we sat in a restaurant every night, we got free food, and we sang More Love, More Power. And it was going out all over the sea, all over the restaurant. We were just singing, worshipping in the restaurant. And when I, just that More Love, More Power, and it was just going across the water. They could hear all the way around, worshipping in this communist country. And many, many people gave their lives to the Lord. On our last day in Yugoslavia, a big storm broke out and there was fire everywhere. It was a forest fire. And the Lord said, I'm bringing judgment on this nation. And one year later, there was war. But through worship, the Lord opened the doors. I don't know why you were struggling to say this. <laughs> it is amazing. It's the Lord you just, I mean, the Lord used you to uh, to beef up and actually what, what we have been saying to our service. Just one word. Pastor Jai, from my experience from his church, he believes a lot in worship. He believes a lot in praise and thanksgiving. But in fact, he declares every time that there is power in things. There is power even in Thanksgiving. Um, one sermon I remember that we used to do, as I take hint of heart, that praise the Lord even when you are grounded. Yes. Yeah. In fact, it is not because you are praising God because you are grounded, but in the end you will realize how ridiculous you are to ground it. And you start praising the Lord and all in here. The sentiments will turn to joy, peace, and joy. Uh, and this is a proof of what um, Claire just said that from all the troubles she must do, by praising the Lord, God changed a situation that was hard to a joy. So Amen. I think we should give great effort, especially when we worship the Lord more devotion to Him. So let's do something. Let's for this week praise the Lord ten times as much as we have done. And next week we bring up testimonies. Amen. Okay, let's do this. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So let's stand up for the benediction. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, well, thank you, God, for what you have done today, oh God. Thank you for the wonderful and powerful testimonies. Thank you for the word. Thank you for the worship. Thank you, Lord. For, for our children's ministry, oh God, thank you, God, for it, each and every aspect of God. Yes, Lord, let us be people of praise. Help us to become that, Lord. Help us and give us a deeper revelation of what it means to worship you in spirit and in truth, oh God. Let this week be a week 
where our bar of worship will rise up to a new level so that we can experience you, experience you more and let your move happen into our lives with power. So thank you, Father, for all this. Holy Spirit, coordinate all this for all our brethren here, for this church, oh God, so that we can come up into a new level, so that next coming service, oh God, we will praise you from the depths of our heart. And yes, Lord, it will not only be a lip service, but it will come from our, from the within. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and your families and your loved ones. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Enjoy your afternoon. God bless you.